Hello and welcome to another episode of Fully Charged. Now, in this episode, I want to look at really, I think, quite remarkable innovation, certainly ahead of the curve. Uh, And I don't want to sound like a Tesla fanboy because I know that there are other manufacturers doing very similar things, but I kind of got to hand it to Tesla that they are slightly ahead of the pack. Um, uh, This is the uh, Tesla Model S, the one that I drive regularly. I've done... um, 15 and a half thousand miles in it and it now is fitted with autopilot the full autopilot so this car effectively drives itself and I'll go through the stages of it because I've been using it now quite a while it, I ha- actually had it fitted when um, uh, I was in the middle of making Red Dwarf so I couldn't film anything while it was done so I've had it uh, installed in the car for quite a while it installed over the air automatically so I didn't even have to do anything I drove into work one day, parked the car, it said update available and you just press accept. Just like on a phone and it updated itself and uh, so now it has full autopilot. So I'm effectively steering the car at the moment. I'm doing 67 miles an hour, I'm keeping the same distance uh, between myself and the car in front and and the car is driving itself, it's like adaptive cruise control. So it's on cruise control, my feet aren't doing anything. Uh, but I'm steering it. But if I then double tap this, the uh, cruise control lever here, you'll hear a little ping. Now it is steering itself. I am not steering the car. Uh, it is very aware of the traffic around it. You can see that on the screen in front of me. There are images of all the other vehicles that are overtaking me. The vehicle in front. Uh, it's keeping a, a, a regular distance from the car in front of it. It's not it's not I'm not steering it now you're legally obliged to hold the steering wheel at all times it says very clearly if I don't hold the steering wheel a little thing comes up and says please hold the steering wheel but it does steer itself really well and not only does it steer itself it also does this now I'm going to indicate to overtake nothing happens to start to start with then it accelerates and pulls past the vehicle that you want to overtake I did nothing I didn't steer I indicated that's all I did I indicated that is really quite weird <laughs> now if I indicate the other way I'm, I'm obviously in responsible for the vehicle so I'm making making sure I keep control of it at all times but the car itself changed lanes it, it won't if you've got someone next to you and you indicate it won't suddenly slam into them it, it waits until it knows it's clear and now we're slowing down because we're behind a big truck I can see the truck on the screen the car knows the trucks there we're now doing 60 miles an hour that now I've just taken over the steering at that point which is very easy to do. If everything happens, you just start steering. It's a little bit stiff to start with, and then you've got control. I'm now driving the car again. Now it's driving itself. Uh, what's been really interesting is the first couple of times I used it, I was very nervous, as you'd expect, because suddenly you're in a car that's driving itself. But it genuinely didn't take long for me, one, for me to get used to it, and two, for it to improve. It drives better than it did, because all the Teslas that are using the same system are effectively through the central nervous system of Tesla are communicating with others so they're learning the roads so when I first drove it I was probably driving along roads that no other Tesla had driven along but now I'm on the M5 in the west of England the uh, this has been a road that's been used by a lot of Teslas so it really knows the road very well it knows the the curves and the angles in the road it knows the speed limit it knows everything it's effectively driving itself. It really is an extraordinary experience. So now it drives so much better than it did when I first started using it, which is all of three months ago. Uh, And I've now driven literally hundreds of miles uh, in the car with it driving itself like it is at the moment. And it's very tempting to take your hands off the wheel to show that you're not steering, but I don't. I like to just have them gently resting on there in case I need to take over. Because there are instances where a sudden movement from another vehicle, like a truck that wants to overtake, comes out in front of you. The car reacts incredibly quickly. If something does slow down right in front of you, it reacts faster than I can. I think its reaction time is about one one hundred thousandth of a second, so it's really quick. One of the advantages, of course, of having a Tesla is if you do need to pull into a lane that's faster, you just do that and you're there already. What is clearly the case is that this technology is getting more and more sophisticated. We're, it's, it's already completely possible for a car to drive itself, as we all know, Google cars and uh, all that stuff. 
they're completely uh, the technology is there it's really the law and uh, the, the trust of human beings you know do you do we trust a machine to do something as complicated as driving and it's when you kind of understand how complicated driving is and how bad we are at it as human beings it's a huge relief to have the car to take a lot of the strain of driving I've only ever used it on motorways it will work on big A roads and roads with uh, you know very good white lines that's what the car is reading this is a camera only uh, camera and sensors but yeah what the car is doing is got it's got a camera up in the wind windscreen that is seeing vehicles visually and it has sensors at the front and the back and the side that tell you, that tell it where other vehicles are that it can't see out the front and also that camera can see the white lines now it didn't hold the steering wheel and that's very bad can see the white lines on the road and where it does get confused sometimes is at junctions or if the white lines are worn off or if there's been roadworks and they haven't painted the white lines things you don't really notice as a driver but you boy does this vehicle notice it because then it starts to go oh I don't know where to go it gets a bit confused and if it doesn't know where to go it switches off and it's your responsibility as a driver to be in control of the vehicle at all times it is very very it's very relaxing that's the thing because this is a really boring thing to do you know getting drive there's all this stuff about driving and being in control yeah that's there are rare occasions where as a as a you know someone who enjoys driving there'll be amazing roads in the Lake District or Scotland or Wales where you go Whoa, where they always film new cars they don't film them on a motorway the vast majority of people's Tesla the vast majority of people who uh, you know spend their time driving are driving either on in busy urban areas or in you know tedious motorways like this and it's just a boring thing to do you've got to concentrate you've got to keep your brain going and focus on it and it's you know it's not fun I don't think this is fun this is boring you know you just hope you get to where you're going quickly anyway that's enough of autopilot autopilot is awesome it's extraordinary the other thing that it does which I think is important to show you is summon and that is going to be a test because I fancy a cup of tea oh good there's some services here I'm going to stop for a cup of tea I will also give it a bit of a top up using the Chadamo connector so, enormous amounts of excitement in store. <laughs> Proof, if it were needed, that even a grade one numpty like me can use the Tesla Chadamo charger. Yes, it is a bit big and clunky, but it's very easy to use. And the reason I wanted it is in Europe, the Chadamo is the most common rapid charger, and it will deliver a 50 kilowatt charge to the car, adding around 150 miles of range in an hour. Not as fast as Tesla's up to 120 kilowatts, but it's still better than a 13 amp plug. Oh, oh, that was a relief. Oh, it's much better than that. Oh, no, I don't believe it. I mean, who, who would park like that? <laughs> And it's a diesel as well, it's diesel. That's even, that's doubly offensive. The thing is, I can't possibly get in there. I'm an old bloke, I can't get, I can't even open the door. Look at it, the wing mirrors are touching, but I've got a solution and I'm gonna try it for the first time. On the Tesla app on my phone, I've got this new thing called Summon. Now it's only in its beta version. I have never, genuinely never used it before. And the idea is, <laughs> I'm quite nervous about this, that you can move the car when you're not in the car. So it's just connecting to my vehicle. There we go. So now I've got to press, I'm going to press reverse and I've got to hold it while I press it and see what happens. Oh my God, the car's switched on. Oh my God, the lights are flashing. It's communicating with the car. It's got to be within range of the key. So I've got the key in my pocket. <gasps> ah, I'm doing that. <laughs> oh, it's scary. And if you're, if you're in the way, it stops. But there you go. I mean, now I can get in the car. All I do is if I let go, it stops. So you don't have to panic about, oh my God. Now I'm going to go forward. It's steering. It's working out which way to go. Look, it, it knows it can't drive into that car. Ah. So it's steering as it goes. Oh my Lord. It can't, look at that. It's really... It's the steering wheel's going bananas. <laughs> and I didn't even stop it. 
once it sees the curb, it stops. What's amazing is there's now two really, really badly parked cars in the car park. Result.